Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen, and this is the Thermal Series, where I'll be teaching you about the magma crucible, the magmatic dynamo, and the benefits of the induction smelter. Now this is by no means the best power gen there is, but it's something that is relatively easy to set up, and that is with using the magmatic dynamo. It does use a bit of invar, so you have to have been able to make alloys at least, but it's very versatile. You can just set it down and then just bucket in some lava, and instantly you've got power. This being said, I'm going to use it for the power source in the demonstration for today's use of the induction smelter. But along that route, we're going to discuss the magma crucible, and how you can make all of your lava yourself, without having to go bucket it up. So with the magmatic dynamo currently pumping some power into these flux cells, let's put down a magma crucible. Clicking here in the center, you can see the different recipes. Obviously you can make water from ice, which isn't particularly useful in default Minecraft setups, but in customized mod packs, this might have some value. Magma blocks can be turned into lava for the low cost of 40,000 RF, and that might seem like a bit, but it's actually a low cost considering that lava can be used in a magmatic dynamo to generate 100,000 RF. So going back to this, it's actually a really good deal. But sometimes getting magma blocks at the bottom of the nether is a little bit of a hassle. Now you can turn other solids into liquids as needed, but most of these don't really have much of a use at the current time. But at the moment, I'm most interested in netherrack, because it, just one piece of netherrack, can be turned into one bucket of lava at only a cost of 60,000, which gives you a net gain of 40,000 RF per piece of netherrack, which there's an entire dimension primarily made of this substance. So it's a pretty easy to come by resource provided that you have access to the nether. So if I put this in the magma crucible, it will start cooking it, but it does need power to start. Enabling the redstone flux cells, I now can turn the power on as it's generated a bit from that first initial burst of lava that I put into the magmatic dynamo, giving it about 100,000 RF to start. Now this is a very slow process. You can speed it up with different augments, but it'll start costing more power. You're gonna wanna be careful with that balance, but it is really free for the most part. You just need a little bit of time to mine up as much netherrack as you want, which is a really easy to mine substance. And it's a bit slow, but it can really fill up your power cells over time. Turning the output to the side here, it can then automatically output any kind of lava if you enable it to go directly into the magmatic dynamo, then powering your redstone flux cell battery center as it is. Moving on from that, we're gonna go into the induction smelter. This here is a really key and versatile item that can really get you a lot more than what you first might think. It has three inputs, a catalyst slot, and four outputs, as all of the usual setups on the side, and on average runs about 20 RF per tick to speed things up. I currently just added in a bit more lava so that I can get more production. I also added in a resonant integral component just to get this power going a bit faster. Otherwise, a bit of time and you would have plenty of power to work with. So in the induction smelter, you have a lot of different types of recipes that it can have. Keep in mind that if something can go into the induction smelter and it will fit into both the top and the bottom, it will probably just go into the top until it overflows and then it might start filling the bottom. So for instance, if I have something coming in, you'll notice that all four of these are going to fill up. So if I'm having sand, for instance, filling this, why sand? Well, if you go to the catalyst list, simply by holding an induction smelter in your inventory and pressing U with JEI, you can then go to the tab here, you can see the catalysts and there's multiple pages of them. But sand is one of them that will increase the benefits you can get from it. Now, an induction smelter is something that will give you more than just one item typically. For instance, if I use a diamond ore in it, you'll get a diamond with a 50% chance of getting a second diamond. Then you have a 15% chance of getting rich slag. Each process that you run. And that's not counting any kind of catalysts. Now the other type of item that you can probably make is going to be alloys. You can straight up make alloys in here. So if you have a couple of blended items or ingots, you can put it in here and smelt it straight up into an electrum ingot, for example. And then the third type is just regular smelting. It will cook just like a regular redstone furnace does for the most part, and you can make different items. Now it can make special alloys as well by taking some lumium blend or ingots plus some hardened glass, you can make lumium glass, or some sulfur and rubber, you can make cured rubber. So this is a way of making some specialty recipes using specialty ingredients, sometimes cheaper, or you get better outputs. But what I'm primarily going to be covering is something more along these lines. If you have the option of taking some ores and putting them in here, 
you can get some really interesting secondary outputs. In this case, redstone. Or put in here, you'll get about three redstone dust and a chance of getting one more. But you also get a 50% chance of getting cinnabar and 20% chance of rich slag. Now using some of these catalysts in here, you'll definitely increase the output that you'll get, whether it be the primary item. For example, if I was using an induction smelter to process diamond ore, I would get 1.75 times the amount of diamonds, and I'd get a better chance of also getting the secondary outputs. The problem is it also will often increase the amount of power you use, and there's a 40% chance of using something like sand. Now if you notice here, something like blaze powder has a chance of increasing the primary modifier and the auxiliary modifier. The energy cost though is cut down considerably compared to the others. But then you've got something like this, cinnabar. Using it as a catalyst, you can get three times the amount of the irregular output, three times the amount of the secondary output, and the energy is about two and a half times, but I mean heck, you look at how much you're getting out of this. And there's an 80% chance that the cinnabar is going to be used up. So as you saw, the primary source of getting some of these, in my mind, is going to be processing redstone ore that has been silk touched. Alternately, you might be able to find cinnabar ore in the world if you have that setting turned on, or you could process some gold ore from one dimension or another and get a very low percent chance of getting some of this. Now it doesn't mean that cinnabar is the only one you can go with. There's rich slag, you can use sand, and you can use blaze powder, all of which will help increase your chances of getting a better product. So let's start off without anything in here, I will get regular ratios. So let's put in five diamond ore, it's going to process this, and we'll take a look at what we get from that. All right, now this is just a random percentage that we get, but in this case we got nine diamonds, which is actually a pretty good result. Let's place down five diamond ores, grab myself a fortune three diamond pickaxe, mine these up and collect the results. In this case, I got 14 diamonds. Now, as you might know, that is slightly random, but it doesn't really compare to this. Why would I bother using an induction smelter? Well, it's all in the catalyst. Let's take out these old diamonds. We're going to keep them off on the side here for our original process. This is what we got with the fortune three pick, and we're gonna put in some sand. And we're gonna put five diamond ore in here and see what the result is from the sand processing. All right, as you can see at the cost of just a few pieces of sand, we now have 15 diamonds and some rich slag, which is a drastically improved result from before. Let's keep a bit of sand between this just so that we can recognize the difference. Now let's switch this out. We're gonna put in some cinnabar and five diamond ore and see what the result of that comes up as. And there we have it. Using up three of the cinnabar, we were able to process those five diamond ore into 22 diamonds and four rich slag. So you can see the difference by itself it's not that good. It's like mining something standard. Adding in sand, you can then do better with 15 diamonds and rich slag than you would with a fortune three diamond pickaxe that only got around 14. And then by adding in some more of the rare catalyst items that you could possibly process into cinnabar, you can extend some of your more valuable materials into even greater amounts. In this example, 22 diamonds and four rich slag. Now on top of that, you can add in some augments. As you can see, I've got a few down here just to try and demonstrate that. Auxiliary process sieve. This will increase a percent of your secondary product by 15%. So we could put that in there. And then if we wanted to make more cinnabar, we pop in some redstone ore and get a better chance of getting that secondary product of cinnabar. And we can even just use sand while processing that to increase it and not use up these really valuable cinnabar Taking something like a catalytic reclamation chamber has a completely different effect. This just reduces the percent chance of your catalyst being used by 20%. But if either of these items do increase the amount of energy that's used in either situation, so you can either preserve the cinnabar with catalytic reclamation chambers, or you can try and get more secondary outputs like cinnabar using auxiliary process sieves. It's probably a good idea to have either of these stored and used separately. You can of course mix and match them, but uh, if you're trying to get a specific output, you probably want to maximize it. And yes, of course, you can always use your integral components in your augmentation, but it's just really going to end up making it go faster and increasing your energy cost. Don't forget there's also alternate uses for the induction smelter, not just for getting better drop rates and everything from your ores. You can even use it on something like gravel to get flint, which can be used in your pulverizers relatively easily, as well as slag, which can be used to make concrete powders, 
or smelted or cooked into rock wool, which is a fireproof wool. And just as a quick side note, that rich slag that we had received can be used to make phytogrow, as well as be used as a catalyst in your induction smelter. So if you don't have something as amazing as cinnabar to go inside, you could use rich slag instead and still get some really close benefit numbers. And as another quick side note, if you are interested in at least getting some kind of catalyst in there and you don't have access to blaze powder, rich slag, or cinnabar just yet, sand is very easy to make with a pulverizer. Just by crushing up any kind of gravel, you can make sand. But you might think, well, then I've got to dig up gravel instead of sand. Not exactly, because in a pulverizer, cobblestone can be ground up into gravel and sand. So if you have a pulverizer that is constantly feeding into and taking from a secondary chest, it can re-pick up the gravel once the cobblestone is done and grind it into sand again. Either way, you get plenty of materials just from cobblestone, which can be easily automated in an igneous extruder as you can see here by putting lava and water on opposite sides, which will create cobblestone. So it's rather easy to come by a lot of the materials for this, and it should be pretty darn useful for making your valuable ores even more productive than you normally would. And that's about it for today's episode of Magma Crucibles, Magmatic Dynamos, and the benefits of the induction smelter. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, come visit us on Twitch, help spread the mischief, click that notification bell, and until next time, I'll see ya.